the eve of the originally announced premiere date for Dune Part 2, there was a significant update concerning the Dune spin-off series. Insider Johnny Sopchak, reporting via the X platform, brought to light some crucial details from the HBO press event held in New York on November 2, 2023. The series, previously known as Dune the Sisterhood, has undergone a name change and will now be titled Dune Prophecy. Fans of the franchise can now start to mark their calendars as the series is slated to debut in the fall of 2024. As of now, production for this newly named series is nearing its completion in Hungary. In this video, I'd like to cover the latest news about this series and what this name change potentially means for the direction and premise of the show. Despite the strikes by the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild, the show continued production similar to HBO's House of the Dragon and Industry, as it's an equity contract production and SAG-AFTRA has advised its members under such contracts to proceed with work. The series initially started filming in November 2022 but took a hiatus for winter. During the break, director Johan Rank, actor Shirley Henderson, and Indira Varma left the show. Olivia Williams and Jodie May joined the cast, with Anna Forster directing multiple episodes, including the premiere. Diane Adamujan is credited as the creator, writer, and executive producer, while Alison Shapker is the showrunner and executive producer. The name change for the series offers a new insight and potentially reshapes our initial understanding of its premise, hinting at promising developments for the show. The series is co-produced by Max and Legendary Television and is still said to be inspired by Sisterhood of Dune by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, taking place 10,000 years before the events of the original Dune series. The decision to change the name of the show is a telling sign, signaling a shift in the story's focus. Rather than concentrating primarily on the origins and evolution of the Bene Gesserit, it seems the creators are steering the storyline towards a broader horizon. For context, the Bene Gesserit are a covert and potent sisterhood in the Dune universe, notable for their exceptional mental and physical capacities. These abilities range from voice manipulation to unparalleled combat skills and accessing ancestral memories. As central figures in the Dune world's political and social arenas, it's certainly understandable for a series to be focused on the development of such a formidable and clandestine organization. However, the apparent revised focus of the show, as indicated by the name change, hints at a more encompassing exploration of the Imperium's intricacies, not just a view from the Bene Gesserit's lens. Despite this broader approach, the significance of the Sisterhood remains undiminished, the term prophecy suggests the series might shed light on the far-reaching consequences of their actions across the Empire, their pervasive influence stemming from covert religious engineering initiatives that are executed over centuries and are aimed at influencing the trajectory of humanity. The series' new name suggests a deeper dive into the black arm of the Bene Gesserit known as the Missionaria Protectiva a specialized group who is dedicated to crafting and seeding legends and prophecies across the Empire. This branch doesn't operate in isolation. Its endeavors are part of a broader strategy, intricately manipulating genetic lineages through a detailed breeding program. The story of the series could explore the early endeavors of the Sisterhood as they sought to amass power and spread their influence. Central to this is their mission to guide humanity's path in alignment with their vision. The series may also highlight their strategic dissemination of prophecies throughout the universe, laying the foundation for the Imperium to welcome the Kwisatz Haderach, their manufactured messiah. Many Dune enthusiasts have expressed their reservations and apprehensions with the show, primarily due to the contrasting reception of Brian Herbert's additions to the series when placed side by side with the seminal works of his father, Frank Herbert. The crux of these concerns centers around the perception that Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson's work to expand the Dune universe lacks the depth and intricacy that characterized his father's original saga. Moreover, a shared sentiment amongst fans, one that I personally agree with, is that these newer additions often run afoul of the previously established lore, introducing contradictions and deviations that are hard for longtime followers to reconcile. 
However, from everything we've been told about this project, including this new name change, it becomes evident that the series merely draws a framework of inspiration from the Sisterhood of Dune book, rather than seeking to be a verbatim screen rendition of it. This distinction and approach, rather than binding the creators to a strict adaptation, offers them some latitude in shaping the narrative. Consequently, there's a budding sentiment amongst fans and followers that the series might seize the opportunity to weave in elements that resonate more authentically with Frank Herbert's foundational themes and envisioned universe. For me, this potential for alignment has ignited a small level of hope for a portrayal that might come closer to capturing the essence of Frank Herbert's original saga. One of the biggest early indicators that this series was departing from Brian's writings was the introduction of several entirely new characters that were not present in the Sisterhood of Dune novel. While the Harkonnen sisters Valya and Tula remain true to the book, the inclusion of several invented characters, including that of the Carino royal family, among others, indicates that the series may be presenting an original storyline. Therefore, it might be more apt to describe Dune Prophecy as a creative reinterpretation of the combined works rather than a faithful adaptation. The Duneiverse has always embraced a degree of flexibility in its canon, with fans selectively choosing what they consider canonical. While some strictly adhere to Frank Herbert's original six novels and the Dune Encyclopedia, others find value in adaptations that take creative liberties, such as David Lynch's 1984 film or the narrative in the non-canonical Westwood video games. Others embrace the entirety of the universe, including the expanded works of Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. While the true scope of HBO Max's new show remains uncertain, the ultimate aspiration is for Dune Prophecy to resonate with the core world-building elements and themes of Frank Herbert's writings, which if done well, could earn a revered place in the expanded Legendarium. Overall, the decision to change the series' name strikes me as a positive development. Although it's difficult to overlook the tumultuous production phase, I firmly believe that it's better to overhaul and rebuild from the ground up than to persist with a project plagued with initial challenges. Personally, I'm drawn more towards the intricate web of politics and manipulations within the Empire rather than a mere exploration of how the Bene Gesserit acquired their powers, a narrative trope many prequels tend to replicate. The apparent deviation from Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson's interpretation is promising. My hope is that this indicates a rendition more in line with the essence of Frank Herbert's original vision, staying true to the sparse yet intriguing details he provided about this era. But I'm curious to know what you think about this news for the new Dune Prophecy HBO series. What are your theories as to what the name change could mean, and do you feel this will end up being a positive or negative development for the show? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And if you're looking for other ways to show your appreciation, you can check out my Patreon page, where members get access to exclusive content and perks. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.